as you can see there. I was just rehearsing for my upcoming Boston Pops uh, debut on the octave mandolin. But no, let's talk about jig bowing. Hey guys, welcome to this month's Fiddle Focus video. I hope you like the new intro. So we are going to be talking about jig bowing patterns this month. You guys voted to find out what my three favorite jig bowing patterns were and how to put them into tunes. Um, so I'm gonna cover all of that. Just a reminder, if you guys want to subscribe to Fiddle Tune Kits for a year, you can now do that and you get 15% off, so that's almost two months free. So feel free to do that at my Patreon, patreon.com slash Music. It's a really gloomy day here, so if you hear some like rain and wind sounds, um, that's what's going on. All right, so let's dive right into jig bowing patterns. So first off, jigs are in 6-8 time. That means there are six eighth notes in each measure. And those six eighth notes are divided into groups of three. So you kind of get a one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six pattern. You can also think of it sort of as one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, or as my friend David Surrett calls it, jiggity, 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 jiggity. So that's another way to remember. So for example, here are a couple measures of last month's tune, The Cliffs of Mower, um, which is a jig, and you can kind of hear that six eight times. So in the B part it goes, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're gonna use those couple of measures to talk about jig bowing today. Probably the most important thing to know about bowing for jigs is not a bowing pattern exactly. It's just how to play jigs when you play all of the notes with separate bows. So, for example, at the beginning of the B part where it goes What you kind of want to do is actually put a little more emphasis, a little longer of a bow on the first note in each set of three. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And that gives it just a really nice, um, kind of, sort of accented feeling on that first note. So with your bow, you're sort of doing this long, short, short, long, short, short, long, short, short, long, short, short. And here's the difference. So if you don't do that pattern, this is what it sounds like. If you do that pattern, it sounds like this. And that's going to make you want to dance. It just has a more danceable feel to it. All right, so that's not going to count in our three favorite bowing patterns. That's just like an extra tip, but it is pretty fundamental. And I think it's actually great to be able to play a jig with all separate bows and still make it sound good. And that's the way to do it. All right, favorite bowing pattern number one. This one is a one down, two up bowing pattern. So in a set of three notes, you're going to have one down and two up. So in that phrase, it would go. And the nice thing about that is it gives it that emphasis on the first note in the set of three, which as we were just talking about, that's gonna make the jig sound extra fun. Bowing pattern number two is just a three note slur. So for those three notes, you can actually just slur all three of them. So like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. You can do that just to kind of provide a different texture, sort of a smoother texture to the tune. And the very last one, this is actually my favorite, is called a cross the beat slur. And what this is, is when you have six eighth notes, you're slurring between the last eighth note in one set of three into the first eighth note in the next set of three. So in the phrase that we're just talking about, that would mean slur here, and then again here. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, with that slur between the third note in one set of three into the first note of the next set of three. Gives it a really nice sort of lilt. And I also like to sort of emphasize that slur. So I'll kind of go. So using plenty of bow on that slur just to give it a little more oomph. All right guys, so that is it. Those are my three favorite bowing patterns. Um, I hope that you enjoyed learning those and that you can go apply them to the jigs you already know. Um, and we'll certainly have more jigs coming up in the months ahead, so stick around for those and we will see various of those bowings kind of pop up. 
in the future. It's really cool as fiddlers that we get to choose our own bowing patterns. You know, I give suggestions in the sheet music, but I always think it's cool to get to the point where, you know, you feel pretty comfortable just applying these various bowing patterns to the music yourself. And so it's helpful to kind of have the patterns in your head so you have a sort of bowing toolkit to draw on. All right, that does it for this month's Fiddle Focus video. It was great to spend some time with you guys this month, and I will look forward to seeing you in the next one. Oh, and, and remember to vote in this month's poll so that I know what you guys want to know about this month's tune, Red Haired Boy. I will look forward to covering that in the next Fiddle Focus. See you guys later. Happy fiddling.